Some Mercedes models are the epitome of on-road luxury. Others are almost unrivaled for off-road prowess. And then there's one which claims to offer the best of both, the GLS. This is arguably the only super luxury SUV that can comfortably seat seven fully sized adults. And it's certainly the only one that can do so whilst offering an acceptably dynamic drive on road as well as extreme capability off it. Plus, in GLS guys, this car is smarter, plusher, more sophisticated and even more appealing. Got a family? You'd like one. There was a time when the sun never set on the British Empire. Roll out a map from 1922 and the world is shaded pink. Australia, India, South Africa, Canada, many others. Fully a quarter of the Earth's land was British as part of the largest empire the world has ever known. Less than 100 years ago, this tiny island claimed dominion over 458 million people. And perhaps that's why there's so much hand-wringing sometimes and frustration when we see cars that probably aren't designed for us, like this Mercedes GLS. We think we matter more than we probably do. Actually, a car this large has more of a role to play in this country than you might think. Let me explain. It's a model that Mercedes bills as the S-Class of SUVs, a luxury conveyance for those whose real, or more likely imagined, commute to the everyday world is from a craggy mountaintop. We first saw this design back in 2007 when it was launched as the GL class, built in America for global sale, but primarily seen since occupying supersized shopping mall spaces from New York to New Orleans. At this car's introduction, there were plenty of experts predicting that a GL would be too large for our market, but not for the first time, they were wrong. Buyers realised sooner than journalists did that this Mercedes could offer you something you couldn't get on a rival seven-seat Audi Q7 or Volvo XC90 luxury SUV, namely proper space in the rearmost third seating row for two footy-sized adults. So Mercedes sold more GLs than they expected to in Europe, a sales momentum that continued with the launch of a second generation version in mid-2013. It was practical, it was luxurious, and it could go almost anywhere. But whether, as promised, it was the S-Class of SUVs was still more debatable. A GL class might be more spacious and versatile than a similarly priced Range Rover, but it simply didn't offer the same exclusive upmarket feel. The Stuttgart brand had convinced itself that this model could do that though, and in order to prove the point, set to work to entirely redevelop the Mark II GL before early in 2016, relaunching and rebadging it as this car, the GLS. The changes have brought a smarter, sleeker look, and more importantly, improvements to the automatic gearbox and suspension that are claimed to deliver the greater levels of dynamic sophistication that this car really needs if it's really going to be a Rolls-Royce for the rough. There's also the state-of-the-art safety and media connectivity that buyers in this segment will want, all matched with the combination of size and capability that has always set this model line apart. Let's put this car to the test. Not everyone is going to feel comfortable piloting something of this size, but provided you do, then GLS motoring is a pretty fabulous way to view your everyday world. The great all-round visibility you get from your lofty perch behind the wheel makes manoeuvrability a lot more straightforward than you might think, and in any case, other road users do tend to scatter as you bear down on them. There are, in theory, two models on offer, but given that one of them, the Mercedes AMG 63 4 Matic, has a thirsty 5.5 litre petrol V8 installed up front, in practice, almost all sales will be of the GLS 350D diesel variant that we're trying here. The key mechanical change in this model line's shift from GL class to GLS status uh, lies with the change of gearbox, or at least a change for the diesel derivative. The V8 petrol version continues with the sharper shifting AMG Speedshift Plus 7G Tronic transmission, 
With this GLS 350D though, uh, you get the completely redesigned 9G Tronic automatic box we've now got used to seeing across the Mercedes range. A little surprisingly, it's not one of those dual clutch units that pre-selects the next gear before you've even left the last one, but the technology used is just as clever, providing for an even spread of ratios and an ultra-tall top gear for economical cruising. Now, this apparently is F1 driver Lewis Hamilton's company car, but presumably he has one because he wants something completely opposite to the kind of thing he'd drive in his day job. Uh, this GLS fits that brief perfectly. As to be fair, you would expect, given its sheer bulk and two and a half tonne weight. Uh, to try and help matters, Mercedes has specified its Airmatic air suspension system with adaptive damping as standard on all models imported for our market, uh, tweaking the setup in a way that has significantly improved ride quality this time around. As before, you can alter that to suit the way that you want to drive, courtesy of Dynamic Select, Comfort or Sport driving modes uh, that also adjust steering feel, throttle response and gear shift timings. You access the various Dynamic Select settings via this rotary dial at the base of the centre console. Uh, with the diesel model, there are five options and you have to go with one of them because unfortunately, there's no set and forget auto mode that would make all the choices for you. So sport sharpens things up nicely, while comfort allows the air suspension to smooth away the worst urban potholes, although still in a rather firmly orientated manner. Uh, there's a slippery mode option for icy weather and light off-road work, and an individual setting that claims to be able to allow you to individually alter different parameters, although in practice it is slightly limiting in that it doesn't allow you to separate steering and suspension adjustment. Uh, the high-performance Mercedes-AMG 63 V8 variant adds an extra Sport Plus option that more firmly sharpens responses and introduces a popping, crackling engine overrun sound that suits that extrovert AMG attitude. Plus, you get a lovely screen on the central display that visualises the longitudinal and lateral acceleration, plus a steering angle in a brilliantly detailed graphic. If you're buying in at the foot of the uh, range with the entry-level diesel model, you'll have to pay extra for the clever active curve roll stabilisation system that's standard on the other variants. Uh, we reckon this to be a must-have feature though, one that adds value to whichever dynamic select driving mode you happen to want. Select the comfort setting, for example, and the active curve setups, active stabilizers soak up bumpy surface undulations much, much better than the airmatic suspension otherwise would on its own. Uh, those stabilizers reduce body roll too, considerably so when you switch into the sport mode. It's not enough to enable this Mercedes to match the kind of dynamic handling you get from, say, a uh, Porsche Cayenne, uh, this car's too big for that. But with that active curve system fitted, this GLS should certainly be able to keep um, a well-driven Range Rover in sight if push came to shove. The active curve technology then uh, makes a really big difference and continues to do so even if you're off-road. Ah uh, yes, off-road capability. Well, we should mention that because unlike its seven-seat large luxury SUV competitors, this car has plenty. The permanent 4MATIC four-wheel drive system provided on all GLS models is, like most rival systems, an intelligent setup uh, which works with 4 ETS traction control to push either more or less of the power towards front or rear as required to suit the conditions that you're driving over. Now that's great for farm tracks or slippery roads, but it won't be enough for the gnarlier stuff. Now for that, you need to select the off-road dynamic select driving mode that all variants offer. This activates a special off-road driving program that sees the slip threshold of the wheels, the throttle sensitivity, the ABS and ESP intervention, and the change points of the auto gearbox all tweaked to suit off-piste use. You also get hill start assist to help you start off up steep slopes that you can then more easily descend uh, using a downhill speed regulator that'll ease you down to the bottom. Going further than that requires specification of the extra cost off-road package that we're trying here. Now this gives you an additional dynamic select off-road plus mode that opens up even greater levels of capability off the beaten track. Plus, if you end up with your GLS on terrain that you probably shouldn't have ventured onto in the first place, then you'll be glad of additional off-road package features like a low-range gearbox, an under-engine guard and a centre differential lock. 
In addition, there are three additionally selectable off-road ride heights that allow ground clearance to be raised by 30, 60 or 90 millimetres, so that if necessary, you can raise the ride height from a starting point of 216 millimetres to as much as uh, 306 millimetres, and that will allow you to wade through water up to 600 millimetres deep. For the ups and downs of off-road living, there's a 20 degree breakover angle, a 30 degree approach angle, and a not quite so impressive 25 degree departure angle. Uh, there are special off-road lights to illuminate your way at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour, and axle articulation is superb. Even without the differentials locked, the electronics distribute power so that if necessary, you can drive along with two wheels airborne. No, I'm not going to even try to demonstrate that. <laughs> it all sounds impressive, but of course what really matters is the way this car performs on tarmac. The quoted 4.6 second 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint time of the GLS 63 AMG model sounds faintly frightening, but then you'd expect that car to be quick with an enormous 5.5 litre petrol V8 plumbed in up front, a unit developing 585 brake horsepower. That's 28 brake horsepower more than it put out in the old GL. More surprising though for us has been the pace of this 258 brake horsepower 350D diesel variant. A potent 620 newton meters of torque from the 3 litre V6 up front means that the 62 miles an hour sprint is dispatched in just 7.8 seconds as the 9 speed gearbox elegantly slurs you on to a 138 miles per hour maximum. The all-important 30 to 70 miles per hour overtaking increment occupies just 8 seconds. So yes, this car really can move when it needs to. What's more astonishing though is the sheer silence that accompanies such relatively rapid progress as you cruise along on pillows of aromatic air. Mercedes reckons that thanks to the relatively sleek shape, an acoustic windscreen and minutely detailed MVH engineering, cabin refinement rivals that of their S-Cast limousine, which is astonishing for something so big and boxy. Certainly, if there is a quieter luxury SUV on the market, then we haven't driven it. As you can see, this GLS is big, just as its GL class predecessor was. A car large enough to make your neighbours question their right to light restrictions. As before, there's more than three metres between the wheels and a total length of nearly 5.2 metres that's even longer than a Range Rover. In other words, you'll need quite a sizeable garage. Having said all that, this time around the design is more effective in concealing its bulk, thanks to looks that are now quite sleek for something so huge and boxy. The well-balanced proportions certainly help, with short body overhangs at the front and rear, suggestive of off-road prowess. The uh, front now has a purposeful look, primarily thanks to these large corner air intakes that flank this more curvaceous lower grille. Further up, the main grille delivers more overtaking presence too, with a larger brand badge flanked by these smart perforated dual slats. In a GLS, the headlamps use LEDs rather than bisonon bulbs and incorporate an active light function that pivots them into bends by up to 15 degrees, illuminating the road surface more effectively. Move to the side and the squarely substantial profile is pretty much as it was with the previous GL class model, with a strong shoulder line and distinct creases that give the flanks some shape, one just below the door handles and the other just above the sills. Little touches like this neat small kink near the rear C pillar help make the overall look seem a little less bulky. As before, the effect is finished off with huge 21-inch wheels, uh, silver roof rails and aluminium running boards uh, featuring rubber studs and jewel-like LED illumination. At the back, there are revised two-piece LED tail lamps, but the main changes have been made down below, with a redesigned bumper incorporating this more purposeful lower diffuser section that better showcases the twin silver-trimmed tailpipes. As usual, of course, though, the more important elements are those that you can't see. As with previous models, attempts have been made to lighten this vehicle's substantial footprint with a car-like monocoque construction and extensive use of aluminium in the bonnet and the wings. Pretty unsuccessful attempts, it has to be said, given that this model remains 240 kilograms heavier than a rival Range Rover. Still, 
What you get in return for that is what I'm going to focus on now, the thing that sets this car apart in its segment, namely space that you'll find at the very back in the third row. Now, the fact that this Mercedes has three seating rows at all is fairly unusual in the super luxury SUV sector, setting this car apart from, say, that Range Rover or the Porsche Cayenne. And the fact that in that third row, two fully sized adults can be properly accommodated is even more unusual, setting this car apart from slightly smaller rivals like the Volvo XC90 or the Audi Q7. I'll show you. The wide opening doors ensure easy access and the electric easy entry system powers the second row chair forward and out of your way. Although it does leave this metal catch exposed that can scratch you if you're not careful on your way in or out. Well, once installed back here, there's pretty much the same sort of space as you'd find in a large MPV. And that is quite a statement to make when describing the third row in anything SUV-like. Cars like these almost always have high floor heights so as to leave space for the four-wheel drive mechanicals below, which means that in the very back of a typical seven-seat SUV, you usually have to sit with your knees up around your ears. Uh, now, when the second generation GL class model this car's based on uh, was launched in 2012, Mercedes managed to solve that problem more effectively than any of its rivals had. And the result is that these rearmost chairs really can be used by fully grown folk. Now, if you have a large family with grown-up teenagers, for example, that could be a crucial consideration. In this plusher Designio line variant, the Thermotronic climate control system even includes a specifically orientated third row zone. So in short, at last, we have a first-class SUV that doesn't demote third row passengers to third-class travel. Let's switch to the middle row. Now this is also pretty roomy, although the middle seat occupant does have to contend with quite a high transmission tunnel. Still, there's more shoulder room than you'd usually get in a car of this class, and plenty of headroom too, despite the standard inclusion of this panoramic glass roof that floods the cabin with light. Now as in an MPV, uh, occupants can adjust their seats for legroom and backrest angle. Time to move up front, an area that Mercedes prioritised in upgrading the old GL class to this GLS status. So has the desired Range Rover style ambiance really been achieved with this package of updates? Well, it depends on your perspective. The beautiful quilted Nappa leather trim of this plush Designio line variant certainly feels very high end, as does the Dynamica microfiber material used on the roof lining and the sun visors. Ultimately though, this car's aspirations have inevitably to be limited by the fact that it must share most of its interior design with the brand's lesser GLE model. Still, thanks to GLE upgrades, that's not the issue it might once have been. Or at least it isn't in the case of this relatively affordable diesel derivative. We might feel differently if we'd shelled out a six-figure sum for the range-topping Mercedes-AMG 63 variant. Even the entry-level GLS models get a leather trim for the upper section of the dashboard, with the Artico man-made hide also extended to lower sections, uh, the belt line and also the door panels in this plusher variant. Getting comfortable behind the wheel is easy thanks to electrical adjustment for both the seats and the steering column. And you get multi-contour climatized seats with a massaging function in this Designio line derivative. There's a purposeful feel to all this plushness too, emphasized by deeply cowled dials that are separated by the 4.8 inch color multi-information display that Mercedes uses on most of its other models. Anything that can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by this central 8-inch command online colour infotainment screen, which looks like a detachable touchscreen tablet and sits proud of these two more prominent central vents. Now, its functionality is primarily controlled by what at first glance looks as if it might be the auto gear stick. Now that is actually a stalk off the steering column. Instead, this rather more futuristic looking protuberance has been borrowed from the S-Class and it actually works rather well once you get used to it. Uh, there's the usual rotary controller dial that swivels and slides and pushes, but here Mercedes has gone a step further, this higher surface turning out to be a touchpad that permits letters and numbers and special characters to be handwritten, 
Although, in this right-hand drive model, there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand. As for the command screen and its functionality, well, for us, that's one of the nicest things about this car, with sophisticated graphics that make those of every other rival system look dull and cheap. Particularly nice are the vehicle sections that give you g-force and steering angle displays in real time and a beautifully crafted screen with extra virtual dials for temperature, torque and voltage. There's all the usual infotainment stuff of course too with 3D mapping, live traffic information, use of Mercedes-Benz apps and in-car internet access for things like Facebook and web radio. In addition, the package provides Linguatronic voice control, um, a 10 gigabyte music register plus access to news and weather reports. And the screen also displays the impressive 360 degree camera system that comes as standard. As for practicality, well, you get this slatted storage area cover at the base of the centre console. It slides back to reveal two cup holders that on this plusher Designio line model will even cool or warm your drinks. Uh, just behind sit the chromed rotary dials for the various off-road options and the dynamic select vehicle dynamic system. Practical touches include a decently sized glove box and space for your sunglasses above the windscreen. Plus, there are spacious door pockets and this twin-lidded leather-topped stowage box between the seats, inside which you'll find the connections for all manner of media connectivity. Well, that leaves luggage space. Raise the huge power tailgate, and there's actually quite a reasonable amount, 295 litres, even when you've got all seven seats upright. That's the same as you get an arrival Audi Q7, but surprisingly significantly less than would be offered by a Volvo XC90 in the same configuration. Now, both Volvo and Audi also have an advantage when it comes to the amount of cargo room you can expect when these third row chairs are flattened into the floor, but neither of those cars have as neat a system for the retraction process. The touch of a button is all that it takes here to free up 680 litres of space. And that's about the same as you get in a Mercedes GLE. If you go further and fold down the second row seats, the GLS reasserts its advantage over all its rivals with an enormous 2,300 litre capacity that's around 350 litres more than you get in an XE90 or a Q7. There's nothing that can match it. Buying a GLS is pretty straightforward. There are, after all, only two power plants on offer, one of which will account for over 90% of the sales. The unit in question is a 3-litre V6 diesel fitted to the GLS 350D 4MATIC, a car that will cost you around £70,000 in standard AMG line trim or just under £80,000 in the plusher Designio line guys that we're trying here. The other engine option will be vanishingly rare on our roads, a wild V8 petrol Mercedes-AMG GLS 63 formatic model at the top of the range, requiring a budget that could well be around £105,000 once you've included some well-chosen extras. You'll be wanting to know where this car sits in the luxury SUV market. First, perhaps, within the context of the Mercedes range itself. After all, the brand isn't exactly short of large, plush SUVs in its lineup. Well, for about £12,000 less than the sticker price of this diesel GLS, you can have the same 350D engine in the brand's smaller GLE 350D model. Or if you really want to be tough in the rough and can find around £19,000 more than is required for this GLS, then Mercedes' rare but very capable G-Class, the so-called Gelandewagen, could be yours with a detuned 211 brake horsepower version of the same engine. But it's far less suited to the tarmac. Perhaps the most telling fact, though, for potential customers is that of, of these three vehicles, it's only this GLS model that can offer seven seats. If that is a crucial factor in your decision, and given that over two-thirds of GLS buyers have children, it probably will be, then there aren't too many other options in this part of the market. Certainly not a Range Rover, which is five-seat only and in comparable TDV6 form, costs around £6,000 more. As for other large luxury SUVs, well, even where they can seat seven, they won't be able to fit fully sized adults comfortably into the third seating row. Only Toyota's Land Cruiser V8 has ever been able to match this Mercedes in that regard, and that car is no longer on sale. 
Still, if you're happy with your car's third row seating being child orientated, then a comparable Volvo XC90 2 litre D5 would save you around £20,000 over this car. While with an Audi Q7 in 3 litre TDI 272 PS, guys, the difference would be around £15,000. A seven seater Range Rover Sport SDV6 would save you around £5,000. Ultimately, though, there is nothing quite like a GLS. And if having considered all of this, you've also come to that conclusion, then you're going to want to know what comes included in that standard spec. And it's quite a lot, actually. So as well as a 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic gearbox, self-leveling airmatic suspension with adaptive damping, and of course, seven seats, you also get an exhaustive kit list, even on a 350D variant fitted with the most affordable AMG line trim level. All GLS models come complete with AMG body styling for the front and rear aprons, the side skirts and wheel arches, plus 21-inch AMG alloy wheels. There's an LED intelligent light setup with an adaptive high beam assist plus system that automatically dips the lamps at night, uh, compensates for bad weather and also helps to, to see round corners. LEDs are also used for the daytime running lights and the tail lamp clusters. Additionally, you get roof rails, auto headlamps and wipers, a panoramic electric glass sunroof, privacy glass, aluminium trimmed LED lit running boards and an easy pack powered tailgate. Plus there's a keyless go system so that the vehicle can be locked, unlocked or started simply by carrying the key in your pocket. Inside, there's full leather upholstery with Artico artificial leather also used on the upper section of the dashboard. The first two rows of passengers are treated to seat heaters, while the rearmost row can be raised or retracted electrically. Plus, there's an easy entry system that electrically facilitates third row access. You also get electric adjustment for the Nappa leather trimmed multifunction sports steering wheel as part of a power adjustment package that also includes the front seats and the mirrors and offers memory settings. Other standard features include Thermotronic luxury climate control, um, ambient lighting and the dynamic select driving mode system that allows you to set up the steering, the throttle response, uh, the gear change timings and the suspension all to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, we also like the fact that all GLS models come with an active parking assist with Parktronic system that will automatically steer you into the tightest spaces, having helped identify them for you in the first place. Now, as part of this package, you additionally get all-round parking sensors, a rear-view camera and a 360-degree camera system. It's all stuff that's pretty important to have on a car this large. Want to go further? Then you'll want to look at finding the £9,000 premium necessary to get yourself the plusher GLS 350D Designo line trim level that we're trying with this model. Here, the most notable upgrade is found with softer Nappa leather that's presented in lovely quilted diamond patterned form for seats that at the front are climate controlled and have a massage function. Other included features at this level run to fashionable Dynamica microfiber trim for the roof lining and the sun visors, a heated steering wheel, temperature controlled cup holders, electric roller blinds, a closing aid for the doors and the boot lid, an air ionization system and an additional thermotronic climate zone to better look after those third row passengers. Uh, with a GLS in Designio line trim, you also get a smarter multi-spoke design for the 21-inch wheels, plus an active curve system that keeps the car more stable when cornering at high speed. Whatever your choice of GLS trim, a cutting-edge level of infotainment comes as standard, courtesy of the usual Mercedes Command Online system, delivered with the brand's latest media interface and touchpad package, and accessible via an 8-inch colour infotainment screen. By this, you access a Harman Kardon Logic 7 8-speaker surround sound setup and get HDD hard disk satellite navigation with a 3D display to which you can send routes compiled on your home PC via Google Maps. Uh, the command screen also gives you live traffic information, use of Mercedes-Benz apps and in-car internet access for things like Facebook and web radio. Plus, the package provides Linguatronic voice control, a digital radio tuner, a Bluetooth phone connectivity, a 10 gigabyte music register, and access to news and weather reports, and also connectivity for SD cards, USB sticks, aux in items, and iPods. 
To match the technology of rival models, the command package now includes smartphone integration that allows use of the Apple CarPlay system for iPhone users and duplicates the functionality of your handset onto the central media display screen and also allows use of Apple's Siri voice control as well as of selected apps like Stitcher Radio and Spotify. Plus, with the command setup fitted, you get all the benefits of the clever Mercedes Me Remote Online Services package. Now, this allows you to monitor many aspects of your Mercedes from your PC or from your smartphone. Almost everything, in fact, from its tire pressure to its washer fluid level. With Mercedes Me, you can lock or unlock your car from wherever you are, summon breakdown assistance, liaise with your dealer on servicing, and even locate the position of your GLS if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. It's a very complete specification, but with a list price approaching six figures, you would expect the top Mercedes AMG GLS 63 formatic petrol model to improve on it, as of course it does. Here you get most of the Designio line trim niceties, along with full AMG themed interior and exterior trim. The cockpit featuring an AMG instrument cluster and branded AMG sports seats with extra lateral support. Driving stuff includes a sharper AMG SpeedShift Plus 7G Tronic Auto gearbox, a high-performance braking setup with red calipers, and a more rearward-biased AMG Performance all-wheel drive system. On to options. On the base GLS 350D AMG line model, we want to pay extra for that active curve system I mentioned earlier. It really does make a difference to this car's demeanour through the bends, and perhaps more surprisingly, also gives this Mercedes a little more capability off the beaten track. Uh, talking of off-road use, Mercedes expects around 10% of GLS buyers to regularly want to take their cars off a paved surface. For those people, the extra cost off-road package will be essential. Now, this includes an extra off-road plus mode on the Dynamic Select Vehicle Dynamic System, which focuses all the functionality of the car for off-piste use. And plus, for really gnarly terrain, you get a low-range gearbox, an under-engine guard, a centre differential lock, and three additionally selectable off-road ride heights. In terms of other options, well, we'd want to look at the glorious 14-speaker Bang & Olufsen Beosound AMG sound system and possibly the entertainment package with its DVD player, TV tuner and pair of 18-inch screens for rear seat passengers that come complete with wireless headphones. Plus, of course, you can spend ages agonising over the creation of a bespoke interior, selecting between carbon fibre or piano black lacquered trim, or maybe wood in walnut, ash or eucalyptus. As for the exterior, well, one option is to add either the standard or the AMG-themed night package that gives you 21-inch AMG wheels along with bodywork trim elements in high-gloss black. On the top Mercedes-AMG 63 V8 model, you can specify two further things, a carbon fibre engine cover and an AMG driver's package that gives you an increase in top speed to 168 miles per hour and driver training at the AMG Driving Academy. Practical options include a fully electric retractable tow bar and the usual racks for bikes, skis and snowboards. So, on to safety, where the standard specification across the range includes, well, an awful lot. We'll begin with the familiar stuff. That means twin front and side airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, curtain airbags to cover all three rows, and rear side bags for those in the middle row. There are also Isofix child seat fastenings, a pedestrian-friendly active bonnet, and neck pro anti-whiplash head restraints. Now, to try and ensure that none of that stuff's ever needed, you do, of course, get the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. There's also ABS with brake assist and an adaptive braking system that flashes the brake lights in emergency stops and keeps those discs dry in wet weather plus tyre pressure monitoring, a traffic sign assist feature that pictures road signs as you pass and then displays them on the dash, and a hill start assist function that stops you from rolling backwards on uphill junctions. The standard safety kit tally doesn't stop there either. I could tell you about an attention assist system that profiles you in the first few minutes of every journey and then continues to measure your responses, warning you to stop for a break if control reactions suggest you're getting a little drowsy. 
Uh, then there's pre-safe technology that braces a car for a crash by tensioning the seat belts and closing the windows. Uh, also a crosswind assist setup that detects and compensates for sudden gusts of wind at speed. Collision Prevention Assist Plus, which warns you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front and will uh, automatically reduce your speed and brake if you don't respond. And DSR, Downhill Speed Regulation, that off-road can ease you down slippery slopes. A uh, fresh addition to the team sheet for this improved model is a lane tracking package that includes two extra elements. Blind spot assist stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when there's a car in your blind spot. And lane keeping assist vibrates the steering wheel to warn you if, when you're cruising at highway speeds, you unintentionally drift out of your lane. Other standard GLS safety features include LED headlamps that turn with the corners and feature an adaptive high beam assist plus system that automatically dips them for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Oh, and there's an e-call emergency call system built into that command online infotainment setup that in the event of an accident will automatically call for rescue help, alerting the necessary services to your exact GPS location. Well, that could be a lifesaver. Is it really necessary to go even further? Well, some buyers think so, and for them, Mercedes offers its extra cost driving assistance plus package, which includes six further safety elements borrowed from the brand's larger S-Class saloon for use in this car. Now, if you like the way uh, that that collision prevention assist plus autonomous braking system I was just talking about looks out for you, then you'll like the way that this driving assistance plus packages extra pre-safe brake and Distronic Plus uh, with steer assist and stop and go pilot elements improve on that functionality. Uh, these additional features combine to also give you autonomous braking at higher speeds with the bonus of specific pedestrian detection at lower ones. In addition, the Distronic Plus element develops your GLS model's cruise control functionality and automatically keeps you at a safe distance to the traffic ahead uh, with the system even seamlessly stopping the car and then moving it off again in tailback situations. It's all very clever. As for other driving assistance plus package elements, well, there are four of them. Uh, we like the idea of BAS Plus with cross traffic assist, a clever system which prompts you to brake in hazardous situations and adds extra brake pressure if you're too tentative. And it also works at junctions and roundabouts to avoid possible collisions from the side. Uh, there's also a pre-safe plus feature that initiates occupant protection measures if a rear end collision is imminent. Finally, it's also worth mentioning that with the Driving Assistance Plus package, the Blind Spot Assist and Lane Keeping Assist systems that I mentioned previously get active tags and become more proactive, not only warning you, but also prompting corrective action. The Federal Office of Statistics reckons that the driver of a Mercedes is 9.6% less likely to have an accident than the driver of a car of any other brand. And looking at what's on offer here, you can begin to see why. You won't be expecting a two and a half ton seven seat luxury SUV to be especially cheap to run, and this one isn't. There is inevitably a running cost price to pay for this GLS model's hefty 2.5 ton weight, its extra rear seat space and greater off-road capability. Although Mercedes has done what it can to minimize it this time around. To that end, there's a more efficient 9G Tronic Auto gearbox and an AdBlue urea injection system that reduces nitrogen oxide emissions, plus efficient electromechanical power steering and the usual start-stop system that cuts the engine at the lights or in traffic when you just don't need it. As a result of all this, the 350D diesel variant that almost all customers will want manages 37.2 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 199 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, to be honest, we would be surprised if you manage much better than around 30 miles per gallon in regular use. But to help in that regard, there is a consumption screen on the command infotainment system that shows you your recent progress in frugality. I'll give you some perspective on that showing. It's certainly an improvement, about 2 miles per gallon and 10 grams per kilometre better than you'd have got from this package when this car was badged as a GL-class model. 
But of course, this showing is predictably worse than you get from the next model down in the Mercedes luxury SUV lineup, the five seat GLE. In uh, GLE 350D, guys, with the same three litre V6 diesel plumbed in up front, uh, that car manages 42.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 174 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, we'll also give some perspective against a slightly smaller seven-seat luxury SUV like a Volvo XC90 or an Audi Q7. And one of those, you'll go about 10 miles further on every gallon and put out just under 50 grams per kilometre less of CO2. But of course, with cars like that, you get less off-road capability and less space for adults in the third row. So it all comes down to what you want. At least the large 100 gallon fuel tank will make your diesel GLS feel quite economical, uh, providing for an operating range of around 900 miles between Phillips. At the other end of the efficiency spectrum lies the storming Mercedes AMG GLS 63 formatic flagship version. Uh, traditionally, those who bought V8 petrol powered Mercedes SUVs could hardly have offended Greenpeace more if they'd fitted a whaling harpoon gun to the bonnet. Going for the GLS 63 still won't get you a place on that organization's Christmas card list, but this variant does manage 23 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 288 grams per kilometer of CO2, which isn't bad for a 585 brake horsepower sporting SUV. And those figures are better than those you'd manage in a rival V8 supercharged Range Rover Sport. What else? Uh, residual values. Now, that is an interesting one. Traditionally, Mercedes is strong here, but large luxury SUVs tend to lose a little more of their value than smaller models. Uh, though this one can't match the best standard set by rivals, it is acceptable in this regard, retaining around 40% of its original value after the industry standard 36-month, 60,000-mile uh, ownership period. On to insurance ratings, which show how far removed the industry is from reality. How can a 258 brake horsepower GLS 350D be rated at precisely the same level as a GLS 63 AMG with more than twice as much power? Answers on a postcard, please, because both are pitched at the top of the shop group 50. What else? Uh, well, we'll tell you that the comprehensive three-year warranty is built upon by a Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have the car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package that takes care of routine maintenance, uh, spreading the cost of regular servicing, uh, guaranteeing the price of parts and labor for up to four services, and also covering the cost of all recommended service items, such as brake fluid, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters, and screen wash. There's also an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit's due. It's also worth mentioning that the Mercedes Me remote online services package that comes as part of the command online infotainment system includes remote self-diagnostic capability, enabling your GLS to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. There's nothing quite like a Mercedes GLS. And if you're a wealthy American, considering it against obvious US rivals like Cadillac's Escalade or a Lincoln Navigator, then buying this Mercedes must seem like a no-brainer. This side of the Atlantic, it could also be seen as a pretty simple choice, provided you're in the unusual position of wanting a huge seven-seat super luxury SUV that actually can properly seat seven adults rather than five folk along with a couple of children. A car that, having done that, can then go on to climb the lower slopes of Snowdon before stopping by Sainsbury's on the way to an evening at the Ritz. And if an SUV that can manage all that is somewhere on your wish list, then you won't be disappointed with this one. But then uh, that much we already knew about this Mercedes when it was badged as a GL. The thing that's changed as part of the evolution into this GLS model has been the greater sophistication of its appeal. Previously, this design was a car you bought if you'd been looking at other large seven-seat SUVs, but you wanted extra third-row seating room and a nicer bonnet badge. It wasn't really a proper Range Rover rival. Now, this Mercedes gets closer to that objective thanks to a smoother ride, a sweeter shifting auto gearbox and a significant improvement in cabin quality. 
True, it's not quite the all-round proposition a Range Rover can be, but in many respects, it offers far more car for a little less money. Sure, some potential buyers may not necessarily need this model's huge size or ultimate off-road prowess, but hey, they didn't really need a big SUV in the first place, so why not buy one that really ticks all the boxes? This GLS does, and manages to do so with a little more dynamic personality, which means that in your SUV search for the biggest and the best, you shouldn't overlook it, even if you are British.